And we are live. Hi, uh, welcome to the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast. Uh, my name is Talia. I'm also known as Franciscan Gypsy on Ravelry and on Plurk. I'm Marlisha, also known as Lady Fornico on Ravelry and Plurk, and Shadowlight or Shadowlight One on my writer's site. Um, we are currently podcasting on April 29th. It is 4.10 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I had no intention of podcasting this late. I fully intended to get up at 1.30 and podcast then. But I managed to sleep through all three of my alarms. So, this is a lot later. Maybe a bit more disjointed because of it. Because, um, maybe a little more rushed because my husband will be coming home. Hopefully it won't be that long. Hopefully not. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. but it has been known to happen. <laughs> when he decides he doesn't want to work out as long as he wants to work out. No more. Or when we talk longer than we intend. We're not doing an hour and 20 minutes again. No. That's not it. We're not being tense. <laughs> Um, so hi, um, we have 95 members, 96 96 members, yay, so we are getting a little closer, so, um, more numbers, I won't, I'm going to pull my list, I'm not even going to pretend I don't have show notes, um, want to welcome Nick Britt, uh, we don't have a name for her, just Nick Britt, no, just Nick Britt, uh, Anna Loves Sheep, who is Anna, I think she's a podcast. Yes, she does. She has a new, I think she's a new podcast. Um, might want to check her out. I haven't had the chance yet. But yeah, I haven't really, checked her out yet. She's yet. really sweet, and I bet her podcast is fantastic. So I want to check it out. And uh, maybe you should, too. Uh, Deborah Tomasello. Yeah. Who is Deborah? Uh, and then Danger Mouse. Who's our newest member. She's joined us. She joined us only about a half an hour ago. Welcome, all of you. So. And welcome to our returning members. Um. Go ahead and pause us now to grab your tea. Um, I was gone in Maryland over the weekend, so while I was there, I finally consented to try some chai tea. As long as I don't put any sweetener in it and just put some milk for the bag to chai tea, it's okay. So I have some now. Chai tea. Chai tea. It's helping my headaches. Chai tea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really gross. I think I might get some iced tea. Hold on one second. Pausing. Where's the pause? Sorry about that. I just can't bring myself to drink that on podcast. I guess that was a fluke that I liked that chai tea in Maryland. Anyway, I was not in Maryland just drink chai tea. Gross as that might be. Uh... I don't like it, so apparently. Sweet tea. Okay, so, um, I was there for, um, my friend Mel's baby shower. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but they believe they're having a boy. I need to work. Do something with my hands. This is my book. Um, they are having boys, so, um, they have a huge, they had a huge boy-themed baby shower. We decorated, uh, onesies, and it was just a whole lot of fun. This is their first baby, and they really appreciated the, uh, baby blanket and, well, they kept calling Ladybird a penguin, even though she's purple. So there are no purple birds like that one. Yeah. Closest thing would be a uh, parrot. I yeah. Think. Or maybe a lo- So no. she's apparently a lavender penguin. <laughs> but they, it was, it was fun. I hadn't seen them for a while uh, since they got to their house, which is a while ago. Got to play with all uh, Josh's and ML's nieces and nephews, who can't remember that they met me previously. So. Because I had my knitting the entire time, I was, uh, they did ask me about, uh, what I was working on and try to convince me to make the whole aloha with one sleeve long and one sleeve like it is now, um. Which without seeing it, they have no idea what that Yeah, is. I'll show that in a second. I'll tell the, I'll go more detail of the story then, but yes, they 
thought that was incredibly funny and because their kids it, it corrected them up mentally and they brought it up 20 million different times um the oldest girl stephanie kept uh asking if I could teach her how to knit and I didn't have anything that extra any extra yarn that was an alpaca and I wasn't gonna teach a child to knit on the alpaca. I just couldn't do it. It's bloody for one thing and I didn't wasn't sure if I had an extra pair of needles. Um so um what I did was I have needles holding um, the end of my sleeve together that has been knitted on, and I showed her at least how to hold the needles with that. But it was fun and had, you know, some things to do with knitting, but not a whole, whole lot. Um, I just got back yesterday, um, fairly late-ish, but I'm still getting back on schedule. Anyway, that is not why you came. Although, um, this might be a good time to talk a little bit about the fact that you got writing done. Yes, I did get some writing done. Actually, I got quite a bit of writing done. My husband was very good. I get cranky when I don't write. Um, yes, <laughs> she does. Um, Not that I was here to experience it. My husband was very good. He let me have Saturday from when we got up to when we left to go eat before we went to Mass. So from like 8 o'clock until 1 or so. So I worked about I did my prayers first and all that. And then I got it started on the shared story I'm doing with Ty, and I did about an hour on that. Then I wrote about two and a half or three hours on a new character of a, one of my back burner stories, which I have renamed since, and came up with a full scene slash chapter with this character, and it's getting some good response. I'm really happy. 1,800 words, that's about three to five pages typed, I guess, depending on dialogue and stuff. So I'm really happy that I got that much done. It's getting a good response, so that makes me even happier. Um, I'm hoping that that means I'm on a roll. I have to find another story now that my first one is finished and the synopsis has to be polished and sent out, and I need to be working on something else. But I did. I got a lot of writing done. I'm very happy about that. Um, I didn't get any writing done. I had the urge toward the when I got home, but I didn't want to pull out the my novel sized tone. <laughs> Beomoth. However you say that word. Beomoth? Beomoth? Beomoth. I'm never sure how to pronounce that word. B E H. Yeah, that word. Beomoth? B E H M O U L T H. L? I think there's an L in there. I don't think there's an L in there. Isn't there? Well, whatever. Beomoth. You know what it is. A big thing. Yes. I always see a woolly mammoth one. Yeah, um, and you don't hear it used often enough. You might see it written occasionally. I love that word. I do, word. too, uh, but I don't always pronounce it correctly. Uh, but um, I haven't touched the tone BMO thing for years because there's so much that needs to be changed. Well, the shared story kind of messed you up a little bit. My shared story, the first one I did, helped me, but the one that we did didn't, because you didn't have the characters that flushed out by it. Right, and yeah. it wasn't even so much the characters I didn't have flushed out, oh, I, which I didn't, but I didn't have the story as well flushed out, is what really burned me. Mm -hmm. um, which is fine, I mean, I like where the characters have gone, but it means that a lot has to be changed, and I just don't feel like putting that effort into it. Um, my Friends from school, Josh and Mal, one to baby shower I went to, um, were trying to convince me to send the story warts and all to them to help me figure out the plot. Because they feel like it's a shame that I have 100 plus pages and I'm just letting it languish. <laughs> I have that much, how many pages in my air search one and it's not even done yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I might have that much in Quells from when I did NaNoWriMo. Do you have that much? I'm not sure. You know, with Neil Ramey, you're just like, blah, 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 blah. yeah, that's like, uh, it's like burping out words. Yeah, that was, I was going to think of something else that wasn't vomiting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Word emesis. Yes, anyway. That um, is not what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> so, on to the knitting. Word emesis. I think that should, yes, you're right. I think word emesis should be the name of the podcast. They're not going to know what that means unless they're medical. It makes me giggle. All right. I don't know if that would be the name of the podcast, but it makes me giggle. Might make people look at it. Anyway. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, and this is a fun, even though the what it means is not so fun. Okay, so 
works in progress. Uh, I did work very little on Heavenly Sapphire, which is the twin set. Is it warm in here? It is a little warm in here. Okay. I'm going to take off the sweater, I think. The twin set uh, sweater and cardigan by Claire Montgomery. Working it for mom from the book Knitting Vintage. I'm using Knit Picks Andean Treasure in the Sapphire Heather colorway. And I'm actually not sure which needle I'm using right now. But I went and I picked up needle gauges. I can find out for you. Because Knit Picks doesn't label their needles. We love their needles, but they do not label them. So, first of all, let me pull up a nightly bag before. This is geek ba bag done right now. Um, I love geek bags. So the sweater part that's finished is living in my nightwing bag. Um, this is good for holding stuff. That sounds a little odd, but I I tend to like um, to have a, a formed bag when I'm carrying stuff around with me, just because little I love it. It's a little floppy though, so I tend to carry projects that are partially done. That reminds me, N uh, knitting den. Has sweater bags. Does she now? Yes, but the one she's making right now isn't quite ready yet, and I want it. <laughs> I want it. Sweater bags. Sweater bags. She has one one that she's making. I don't know how many she's gonna make. They she has two up that are medium size right now. Mm, sweater bags. Sweater bags. <laughs> yes, I'm excited about that. It's a Mickey Mouse one. I think the the big well, one is a Mickey Mouse. But anyway, she's making it's her first one, so she's been making other ones. Okay, I'll keep my eyes open. Yeah. Uh, yes, shameless plug for Denise, who's so sweet to plug us for our autism awareness. Cal, thank you, Denise, for the plug. So, uh, here's, you saw this last week, the back. Here's the back of the sweater. It's curling. Well, that's because it's that's sucking that for you. There we go. Now you can see a little bit better. Um, that's pretty. Pretty. Oops, what was that? Oh, that was the end. Yes. It was to keep the stitch an eyeball from coming off. Well, that's right, it's not eyeball. <laughs> uh, it's to keep the stitch from coming off. Not really doing its job very well. Yeah. You and need to tighten the bottom of my it's, not, it's taking a long time because we have to say something and fill the dead time. Um, anyway, but this is the back. It's the back. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and dump that back in there. You saw that last week, if you watched previously. Um, and then I moved the part that goes in my purse in my TARDIS bag, my medium TARDIS bag, with the March planets inside. And that's Cloverbird, isn't it? That is Cloverbird. Yeah. Um, I started rewatching Doctor Who. And I said I want a TARDIS bag in my purse. Now this is why I pulled out my... Denise has a Christmas Dalek bag for her Christmas in July. Wow. <laughs> At least it's not pink Daleks. I don't Wait. know. I don't know if they're blue Daleks or pink ones, but I can't remember. But that Funny kind of... has the pink Daleks. Yeah. She said, Denise said she used to watch Doctor Who when she was a kid, and she said the Daleks used to scare her half to death. <laughs> Well, it's like, they can do other words, but if you haven't seen them, like, their main word is exterminate. Mm -hmm. Exterminate. Okay. You have tunnel vision. So, it is a size 3 that I'm currently working with. Huh. I want to make sure I remember the pattern, but that makes sense. I'm on the ribbing as well. I didn't realize it went down as low as a three. Okay. I better make sure that's the size I'm supposed to be working with. At some point. <laughs> might be nice. For some reason that seems a bit small, but... Um... I'll double check. Um, so... Well, I never actually showed you the process. I just sort of checked my needle gauge and then threw it away. Yeah, so she's not quite here. I do apologize. Hey, I just woke up. Mm -hmm. This is whose fault is that? Yours. No, I don't. Um, think so. I am not your alarm clock. 
Oh, I just have a few stitches before I did that. Oh, are you in the middle? Not really in the middle, like four stitches from the middle. She's still pulling all of it, just not a full fledged length. I can easily, it's not like it's right in the middle. I can easily just make sure I do this right. Yes, it is right. Because I'm in ribbing, I need to make sure I actually do ribbing. Because everything I'm working right now is in one on one ribbing. I don't know why. It used to somebody, be. Somebody else was saying that. I think it was, um, I think it was, um, Amy. I'm getting in circles. It's just really weird. I think like, she was saying, like, for a while, there was, like, she was doing everything the same. Like, I think it was Amy who was talking about that. It's really weird. Like, for a while, I had never seen one on one ribbing. It was all, like, two and two. And now, anytime I see ribbing, it's one on one. It's like it's caught on fire or something. Well, that feels like it might be uncomfortable. It might be dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Stop our smoke alarm. It's it. like a swatch. There's the ribbing. For the bottom of the sweater. I keep going until it's like four and a half inches, I think. Oh, that's steady, bro. And I've been working on this at work because I have an orientee who doesn't really need me. She's at the end of a period of time. You know, she is only like a week or so. I guess she has two weeks, so she sent me a Facebook message to verify when I work the next two weeks. Uh, so I guess when I come back from vacation, then I'll come back without orientee. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so she takes the majority of my work. Uh, but I still have to be available, so I can't keep really, really busy. I can't be out and about. Um, if she can't find me, if she has a question, that kind of defeats the purpose of being on orientation. So I'm kind of in that nowhere land where I help with small things, but things I can easily extricate myself from. So if she needs me, I can be available. But it's my TARDIS bag. TARDI bag. TARDISes? I don't know. My forever bird. TARDIS. This is a medium size. With different colored TARDISes, TARDIs, whatever. I guess for each of the different doctors, because there's been 11 of them now. Okay, your turn. All right, I'm going to go... I. I'm going to go with the one I worked the least on. I really shouldn't even show you this, but I'm going to anyway. Because you feel like it. Darn it. This is my Senna shawl. My colorful dreams. And I had made progress, as I said last time, and tinked it back. And I don't know why I have such trouble with this. Well, right. I think it's going to rain. It might. It's supposed to do it. But my headache was really pounding a little while ago, so I wouldn't be surprised. Um... I actually felt the temperature just dropped a bit. This is on US 4s. These are my knit picks needles. US 4s on a 32 inch cord, I think. And I haven't made really any progress. I think I did a row on here. Um, you can see the little dinticky. You did, yeah. Yeah, the little dinticky there. The green one. So I, I haven't done much of anything on this. I just didn't feel like it. I mean, I like the pattern. I'm a little frustrated that I keep losing count or whatever. It's not that I lose count. I lose my, I don't know. I just, I like it and I can't, I'm looking forward to finishing it. I like the material. I don't know. I don't really want to right now. So I will finish it later. I was going to do it for the cow, but I don't think that's going to happen. I will finish it because I do like it and I want Oh, I just to, to use it. realized that this thing I'm working on can be three bright colors. Mm -hmm. If you finish it by tomorrow. Oh, I finish it by tomorrow. Yeah. Heavens. I'm in almost my, done with it now. In my Knitting's My Bag, Faith, Hope, and Love Bag, which I really love. I think it's my Because it closes May 1st. This is my first lowest bag, um, I think. And I just love it. I do. I love it. The the um, interfacing has um, softened up a little bit, so it squishes a little more. I just love it. I take it into church with me sometimes, and people don't look at me funny because it's that big help and love, and they think it's some kind of bag with my books in it. <laughs> so, but so anyway, that's that's my Sedna. I'm not really. It people will be, know we're insane knitters. They yeah, know it it will be finished. I I ran into somebody um at church, and I like the person I am. I said, did you do that? Did you make that? And it says it looks like it's crochet. It's a knitter crochet. She says crochet, and it was kind of a swirly. Pattern. I'm not sure exactly. I, ha I haven't been able to find another one because she said she couldn't find the pattern. Her mother-in-law had made it, 
and she knits and crochets, but she was looking for the pattern, so I directed her to Ravelry, and I went to look on Ravelry, and I couldn't find it. So if anybody knows of kind of like a swirly kind of pinwheel type of pattern, um, could you let me know? I mean, I, I looked on Ravelry, I didn't see what I thought her pattern was, and at least I'll have an idea of what's out there that I may have missed. You know, if you see it, if you think of it, it just, you know. But anyway, I thought it was funny because she just kind of looked at me and now she wants to start, she would like to get together with Talia and me and if we could find some other people, maybe we'll start a group at her church. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's, we've had several people who expressed interest. We just haven't ever, it's hard to make the schedule. Mm -hmm. sure. But, um, Your turn. yes, it is. Okay. Next one. Oh, but the one that I mainly worked on, um, that is not finished. Let me actually just finish this okay. row. That might be most intelligent instead of leaving it partially. Did you have your little... Yeah, I, but I figure since I'm three stitches away from finishing it, so it makes more sense to finish the row and then clip it off. And then when I end up showing it, I won't be in the middle of the row. I apologize for drinking during the entire podcast, but I do... Uh, I never apologize. The, the, the weather... The weather it's actually easing up. My head doesn't hurt as much now, but I've had a rough time with some of the weather changes lately. Well, they're drinking too, because we told them to get their tea yes, and we did. water and stuff, yes, so did. they're drinking with us. I hope so. I figure if you want to hear me make somewhat sense, you need, I need to be able to drink and stuff, so I'm thirsty. No apologies, sweet tea. You need sweet tea. Sweet nut. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, get your pet project out. You're making the people wait. <laughs> I did bring her up better than that. <laughs> Do not judge homeschooling by that. Hi. Mm. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ow. I haven't seen her all weekend. Because I've been out of state. Yeah. So, this is like my absolutely most favorite bag ever. I love it so much. Uh, I just got this. So, this kind of jumps into uh, fashion, yeah. fashion enhancement a little bit. I love this muchly. This is my Plover Bird TARDIS sweater bag. I did not realize when I picked this up how much I love this. Um, it was one of those, oh, hey, look. I think she has an ad at the bottom of our she does. She she, I think she picked us to be someone that gets at the bottom of our uh, I don't know podcast. How that's work, but yeah. um, and to be quite frank, it's very bad for me because I go and I get tempted and I go and I check out and see what she has. I do that too, but constantly. And this popped up. This is actually in the ad. This is the bag I wanted. I, I looked at it. I'm like, I don't need one yet. I'm waiting for Lois. See me. I am waiting for Lois to to get that new bag of hers out that's going to be for fiber. <laughs> so I'm waiting. I'm trying to be good. I didn't. I was not good. This screamed my name. And the thing is, it fell out of my... Wow! Lois. I'm sorry. It fell out of my cart. She can't get the pen out properly. I have this one curl that's just doing whatever the heck it was. Right in the middle of her forehead, because when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she is bad, she is horrid. Beep. <clears throat> okay. So we that's saying that Superman is, when he was good, he was very, very good. When he was bad, he was poor. Because the curl good. is definitely yes. in the middle of the his forehead. Jerry curl. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, this was in my basket uh, for Cloverbird. And when I went to pay, it fell out of my basket. And I had to wait 10 minutes to get it back in because it kept telling me it was unavailable. I was like, oh no, I lost the bag. So 10 minutes later, I snagged it again as soon as it became free. And I bought it. It's and such a nice bag. I loved it so much, Lee. So I, I immediately moved my, um, my setting scarlet to this bag. Explain um, that it really is. Huh? Oh, it really is bigger on the inside. Mm -hmm. So, big enough bag, right? Wow, doesn't that look bigger on the inside? It, it certainly is. It's it is on the so awesome. It makes me so 
It has a universe inside. It's bigger on the inside. It makes me so incredibly happy. I mean, it's one of those bands that you look inside and it seems to go on forever. I love it so much. Um, it has no pockets, but I've determined I kind of like that because I got tired of my sweater getting caught in the pockets. So my favorite is... Favorite is... Yes, it is now a word. My favorite is bag for, for sweaters ever now. Davina must be taking her shower. Yeah. She's inside today because the weather is about to break. Right. And I'm just going to show you because it's in here. Another stash enhancement. I have a TARDIS. Uh, call box. Call box. Uh, TARDIS box. Uh, the TARDIS is box. Yeah. I have a TARDIS um, needle gauge is yeah. what I was trying to yeah. say. But throwing out random words did not help me. Yes. Yeah, it confuses you. Which is nice. It has to be. And, and also what's nice here. is at the bottom, you'll note, it has... A two inch measuring. So does the other one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of nice. I think all of them. Well, this one here is an inch and a half. Oh, this sheet's a little small. Yeah. Uh, and I think it might be even smaller for the owl. Uh, because there's just not as much space. Right. This one's only an inch. Yeah. So. But the TARDIS is it's two, two inches. But. Um. So, this is what I was knitting on all weekend. Josh and Mel's nieces and nephews kept convinced, trying to convince me to leave it like this. No sleeve here, one sleeve here. That's not going to happen, obviously. Uh, I don't know. Why obviously? Well, I'm not into that kind of new fashion suit. Oh, you need so, the sleeve hanging down on one side. I am very, I'd say, hmm, I might have another 12 rows plus a decrease to go before I can start thinking about ending the sleeve. I got a lot of progress. I think I was somewhere, I was more up here mm -hmm. last time. So, I mean, that's a lot of sleeve that I got done. And this will be a nice warm sleeve. I mean, a warm sweater. Yes, it is. Um... So I'm very happy with how it's working so far. Basically, uh, I carried the TARDIS bag with me everywhere. Whenever I was sitting, I was doing something with it. Um, it was it was funny because the kids would watch me do it. Um, I had at one point one of Josh's nephews climbed on my lap and I knitted around him um, because he did it when I was almost the end of the row and they were, they wanted me to get up and do something. So I was like, well, let me finish this, and I will. And they sat there and waited. And I think they wanted to show me their back bend, handstand kind of stuff. And then later I became a jungle gym. So those kids take a little while to warm up. When they warm up, they warm up. <laughs> they climb all over you. <laughs> and we determined that it is only truly necessary to have a spoon and some physical humor, and that's all you really need for kids. Oh, we're trying to find that out, huh? Well, I think everyone knows that, but... Um, sometimes you don't even need the spoon. Sometimes, yeah, you're right. Sometimes you don't even need the spoon. Really, you just need noises sometimes. And the, or a look. Yeah. Um, Mel had this huge box that she got because it had... A, they got her a huge um, car seat. That box will entertain them, I'm sure, for hours. Mm -hmm. They can't throw that box away because... Hey, if I had that box, I would totally make it a reading box because it's, it's huge. I could fit in there. Mm -hmm. um, Mel gave me a really weird look. She's like, why would you need a box for reading? But Josh's 18-year-old sister's like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. There's the maturity level. Hey. 18. Hey. I get it. It's, it's only because pregnancy ate some of Mel's brain cells. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, so yes, a lot of progress on this. I keep, I'm getting really excited because I want to put the buttons on. Can't you put the buttons on already? I can, but I'm telling myself I can't till I have the sleeve finished. It's a reward. Yes, it's a reward. Mm -hmm. You gonna block it before you put the buttons on? I'm not sure. You might want to. Whatever Mel tells me. No. Not Mel, my remaining college Mel who's pregnant. Yes, I know. Uh, and Mel it was, Amy was talking about the fact that she blocked something before she... She did for yeah. um, the... And actually, I noticed that last podcast. I thought that was very interesting. I'm going to keep that in mind for next time I do a sweater. Yeah. It was uh, before she put on 
the button band, mm -hmm. um, which would help with the problem I've noticed where sometimes that'll curl while right. you're putting button band on. Um, Cause you were telling Darren, Darren, right? Darren, yeah. You have to do it. So yes, a lot of progress on this. I mean, as That's you can, be nice on you. As you can see, I think I'll steal it from her. Even think all you want. The room. She doesn't wake up when I walk in the room. I can just take it. At this point, you wouldn't though because you can't. You're not wait, really. Well, I wait till it's done. Uh, but I think it's gonna be nice and it's gonna be warm. And by the time I finish, I won't be able to wear it till <laughs> many months later. Well, my husband keeps the house pretty cold. Yeah, so he, she might be able to wear it sometimes in the house. But and the weather's been so so strange lately. I don't know. Maybe she'll be able to wear it out. My goal is to finish this by May 30th. Um, is, that, is that um Emily's? Oh, I might still finish some stuff about then. Yeah. Um, the. But the holding thing. the sticks podcast is having a if you that's Emily the holding the sticks podcast if you did a pro, started a project let's see I think it was before, before April April or something like that I think it was before April first or before April fifteenth you it's getting it's getting it off the sticks I think is it still getting off the sticks something like that you're trying to get yeah. projects that you haven't touched or that you that you started a long time ago off the needle right. And I started this a, long, a while ago. I wanted to get the cable one off the needles, but the cable one's not nearly as far along as this one. I actually have potential of getting this one off the needles. Yeah, I was. I wanted to try and get the Sedna done, but I actually think that my next project has a better chance, even though it's not as far along. Um, I'm working on my English garden, which is uh, was a gifted pattern to me by the designer uh, Anastasia Knits uh, from Anastasia. Uh, Knits podcast group and as the stage in this design. She's fantastic. I love her pattern. I had I was a little bit further on this than I am now, but I rem I I had because of the number of chains, I had a hard time finding the holes to do the counting and I kept messing up the count. I was fudging it. So I said, you know, I just wanna I wanna start it over again. So what I did was at first I did another kind of like a swatch. Um, I chained another one. This is get it out of here. This is the baby blanket size, not the smallest one, but the second one. And I may still do this um, if I decide to give it as a gift, you know, a matching baby blanket. And I found that I could get the right number of stitches. And what I realized was, and I'd forgotten this because I hadn't done a, lo a large project with crochet in a long time, is I need to use a bigger hook to do the, to do the chain, to do the foundation chain. That I'm using for the project, so I ended up doing the chain um, with a. Oops, let me look at my notes here. I ended up doing the chain with a J hook, and I'm using an I for the pattern, and it's coming along really pretty. I like it. It's. I don't know. I may have said this on an earlier podcast when I first showed you all this. Those of you who were here before, uh, and remember it. These are not colors I would normally choose. Um, I like so. I, oh, maybe didn't. I like the jewel tones, and I'm not quite as vibrant in my color choices as she is, but I have that general kind of, that's what I go for. This, I saw it in Hobby Lobby. It's, um, it's the, um, Yarn B Danielle in the Dawn colorway. Hee <laughs> hee, that's two podcasters. Yes. It is? Uh, Daniela. And, oh, Daniela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and Dawn. And, Dawn. Um, and it jumped out at me, and I picked it up. I picked up a, I picked up a sweater's worth or a blanket's worth or whatever you want to call it. So I'm using it for the blanket, and I think it's going to work well in this. Um, it does look pretty. It's not my normal um, choice, but it was a nice, it was a nice um, break from all the bright colors I've been doing for the cow. And so I'm enjoying it a lot. I thank Anastasia very much for the pattern. And, uh, yeah, who needs to break some bright colors? Bright colors are happy. They are happy, happy but I wanted to do something different, so I did. It's okay to be different. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's okay to be different. Okay, well, I'm almost at the end of my uh, needle. We'll just talk about that one then. Um, so, well, this is the one that I'm going to be talking about. I just wanted to show it. I might as well explain the project while I'm finishing up my needle. This I have always wanted to make the Jane hat. And did you see um, 
uh, Karen's podcast. Um, I haven't seen any of the circles. She was talking about that's not that's around, not, the, around the twist. I'm sorry. Um, the Fox News, Fox News, Fox uh, people who are just charged with the Firefly, I guess, have come down really hard, and you cannot sell the Janeway patterns. You cannot sell the Janeway hat. You can still make them for free, but apparently they sold the. My understanding is correct. I have to go back and look, and you can listen to her podcast to find out. Um, I forget which one it is, one of the more recent ones, that um, they sold the license to some company who does that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, the copyright to them, and they, the, the people they sold the copyright to are not having, having, are not sending out these cease and desist notes and things like that, but um, foxes. Oh. So um, you can still make it if you want to make it for yourself, you want to make it for you know a friend, as long as you're not selling it. Um, you're not selling the pattern, you're not selling the hat or whatever. Um, I may have it wrong, so please go check out her podcast. I think it's either the most recent one or maybe a couple back. Um, she has the scoop, so you might want to take a look at it. Um, that being said, I've always wanted to make the Jane hat from the Firefly series. Um, for those of you who uh, watched it, uh, watched the series, I believe it's the episode, is that Objects in Space? can't remember. No, I think Objects in Space is the last, last episode. Anyone is, anyway, it's the one where the, uh, Mal and uh, Zoe get a package in the mail. Um, and it turns out to be a dead guy. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't give, out, give away too much because the episode goes from there. But, what Jane gets in the mail is this, this is a free pattern so I can show this. Um, that's probably why it's free, actually. Yeah, I don't know when this happened, so... Um, I'm not sure if I have a good picture of it. But... It looks similar to that. Um, basically, the bottom part is orange. Usually more of a burnt orange. I didn't have burnt orange on hand. Then well, it's you yellow. Didn't, you didn't realize I didn't realize I had it on hand. It's yellow. And it has this poof ball on top. Um, Think pom poms from cheerleading. Yeah, yeah. and the pom pom on top. And it is these two red ear flaps. Uh, the red? The ear flaps are red. <laughs> and it's most, as Wash says, uh, a man walks down the street with a hat like that, they, they know he's not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jane is a mercenary, tough guy kind of person. But he is inordinately pleased with this ugly hat that his mom made him. Mm -hmm. And he wears it, like, the at least the rest of the episode, if not from there. So it's known as the Jane hat. Um, everyone loves it. Knitters. I just saw a big, little sourpuss baby Jane. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always wanted to make this hat, but I don't know... A guy I once dated would have definitely worn it, but I'm not going to make an ex-boyfriend a Jane hat. Um, but my friends Josh and Mel are geeks like I am. They are actually the group, uh, when I was at college, they were in the group of friends who introduced me to Firefly in the first place. Actually, I think Josh might have been the one who introduced me to Firefly, now that I think about it. Um, so... I totally think they would let their baby, they would put this on their baby boy when he's born. The pattern was free, the yarn was in stash, it really isn't costing me anything to make. Um, I am quite a ways through the hat. I started this very early this morning, around 2.30. And I think I have a couple more rows till the decreases. And then I'll make the pom-pom and the ear flaps. Um, so it's almost done. I'll probably finish this tonight. Is that garter stitch? Nope. It's stockinette? It's stockinette. Mm -hmm. Um, because this is in the round, you're just knitting. Because this is a free pattern, I can totally tell you the pattern. Um, so you have three rows of one-on-one -on -one ribbing. You have eight rows of stockinette and orange. You have 14. No, 16. Do they have different sizes or just? Just one side. 16 rows in, um, the yellow. Then you end up working knit two together until there's only eight stitches left, and then you draw your yarn through the all the live stitches to tie it off. 
you make your pom pom, you make your ear flaps, voila, it's done. Uh, very simple. So cute. You uh, should make one for your bears. I might. I might. This is a size. This is a little bigger than what they suggest. I didn't do a gauge swatch. I didn't feel like it. Um, they the told me. Into it. Yeah, that's exactly. They told me to do size eight. I went up a needle size because I wanted the baby to be able to grow into the hat. And, I mean, it will stretch too. But I didn't. If if the baby had a big head, I didn't want to have it not fit. Um. And I had seen on one of the project pages where someone's baby had a big enough head that it didn't fit. So I was like, I'll go up a needle size. If it's too big, the baby will eventually grow into it. And it's not too loose, so I'm happy with it. That fabric's pretty good. Um, if it'll you wash it, it'll be soft. Yeah, and I'm going to wash it as soon as I finish it. Maybe do it cold, but you don't want the colors running. Yeah. Although I think it's Hobby Lobby, isn't it? It is Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Um, this is Hobby Lobby uh, neon orange, um, Hobby Lobby uh, yellow, not and neon yellow. Uh -huh. not neon yellow, not neon yellow. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, um, I'm going to be doing the ear flaps in um, Corone one pound in the um, red or brown or red. No, it's a red colorway. It's uh. Claret colorway. Um, That's the stuff Davina gave her for a... Uh, yeah. What was it? Oh, it was for my birthday. Yeah. No, Easter. That's right. She wanted... Yeah. Davina's really big on presents for every single occasion. Yeah. The more presents she... The more occasions to give get presents, the better she likes it. Um, so I'll probably wash this once it's done. So it'll be washed sometime tonight. Very happy. This was a, a whim. Um, I forget why I was on... I think I was going through patterns because... Someone had shown a finished sweater pattern in one of our threads, a baby sweater pattern. So I was looking through baby sweaters and making a baby um, uh, tab. brain fart, brain tab, brain, brain tab. tab. <laughs> I need to make a baby tab too. I Not made a ba tab. I made a baby tab in my queue list um, and also in my finished objects. And, that, and then when I was making the tab, I was like, well, I should look for hats. And I was like, I should look for Jane hats for babies. So this was the one I liked best. They had a crocheted version, but the one in the show was knitted. So I wanted to make one more like the one in the show. And this one had the most projects. It had like 144. But I'm, I'm doing US 9s, and I ran through all the colors already. It's the Sweet Baby Jane. By Heather Hill. Okay. And if you're looking for it, it's J A Y N E. Uh, my last project is the one I kind of I didn't do a lot of knitting most of the week or crocheting most of the week. Things were very hectic, which is why my husband gave me some space at the end of the week. Um, but I when I did start up, this is what I spent most of my time on. I have a friend, our lady has been doing my hair for the last 14, 15 years, and she's ha and I think I mentioned Tabitha that she's having her baby. Um, I think in September, and they tried for a long time. So I wanted to make her something because she's really nice and she puts up with all my my whims and stuff. She's taken care of us for a long time. So what I'm making is this is the first part of the project, and it's called Sydney the Snuggly Penguin by Stacy Toff, and I don't want to show you the page pattern. Um, actually, I got it out of a book, um, and Tyler's book. Only I'm not making a penguin. I'm using the pattern to make a cardinal. Because we're we're in Virginia and the state bird's a cardinal. I don't know if Tabby's having a boy or a girl. And I just thought it would be kind of fun to make a cardinal. You might have to do a different beak. Yeah, I might. We'll see. I mean it's it's it's, it's cartoonish enough. That yeah. It might not matter. So here's the bottom of the body. And I'm almost done with the top. No, I had to see the bottom. I had to do some color work. You can see where I carried the yarn in here for the color work. And I realized that it's kind of tapered a little bit, so I tried to taper it a little bit here. You can't really see it, but you will a little bit. Um, so that's the top and the bottom. I still have to do the wings. Um, the beak. The wings and the beak. And the feet. And the feet. Oh, so they already built in the... Um the stuff around the eyes. 
Well, the stuff around the eye. What do you mean the stuff around the eye? Because they already have a white circle around the eyes, and then you would just do the black circle in the middle. Well, what you do is you do. From what I saw, what you do is you do the little white or whatever color you're doing, and then you continue the round in the other yeah. color. So, so that's what I'll do for the eyes. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the beak like this or not. I might. I mean, it's a child's toy. It doesn't have to be exact. And I'd rather it not be pointy for an infant. Even if it isn't that pointy, yeah. it doesn't really matter. I, I'm hoping to then go ahead and do the blanket that Taya did for Mel and Josh. Again, making it in cardinal colors. I don't know if you can see that. That would be um, going to next on the needles. The, the thing I will do if I have enough time is the penguin hat that goes with the blanket. And you might have enough time because you're not due until September. Right. Not due until September. Unlike Josh and Mel who are due May 25th. Right. <laughs> so uh, I went kind of into my next on the needles with this, but um, I did make quite a bit of progress on this. I only started this three days ago. Um, so it's a really fast crochet, and I'm enjoying it. Even the color work part, although I had to take some of it out because I got distracted when Talia came home. And it's living in my... Have you noticed how smoothly she has managed to blame her own mistakes on me? Yes, I'm, I'm very good at that. This is my, maybe it's my bag. Sarah bag, I think? My Monet bag. Okay. Um, and that's where, I'm, that's where it's living. I'm using um, an H-hook for that project. I thought I was going to use a G-hook, and I just decided, no, I like the fabric. It's okay. If it's too open, I can always make another one that's in it with a G-hook. Um, and the yarn is, um, I love this yarn. What? I, can't yeah. my, I put my notes in here. I have my stitch marker just um, my slipper. I, uh, I'm using I love this yarn in red and in black and the stash yarn for the rest of it. And there's my notes. Okay. That's it for me. Okay. Do you have any finished objects or more whips? Well, then I'm going to get my sweater on really cold. Because we should probably start getting close to the end here. So, and we still have lots of learning stuff to do and everything. You probably noticed, well, you might not have you necessarily know that I was, I did work on one project primarily until about the middle of the week. Actually, I don't think it was even that long. I think it was like one or two days after the podcast I finished mm -hmm. it. I decided I wanted to get things off the needle. Yay. And look who's done. Desk. Desk. Isn't he cute? He is big. He did, he cannot stand on his legs. He's a pillow pony. But look, his legs are actually sitting a lot better because yeah. he's been sitting like this. So yeah. it actually isn't like just hanging there. Um, he's got golden eyes. The eyes are from Davina, the Christmas present. Oh, Jackie. This is... uh. Jackie Knits, this is your the part of that yeah that pink yarn I grabbed from the um uh I don't think I wrote it down here. But you gave me some pink yarn. From your stash. From your stash, and this is from there. I held it double um for the ears. And this is a bunch of uh of my own stash yarn here to make the the mane. And the tail. And the tail, yeah. So there's the horse rear end. <laughs> He's really cute. He's happy to be on the podcast. Oh, okay, buddy. So, he's a happy pony. Very nice pony. And he's huggable. Mm -hmm. He's trying to think of My dad said he thinks he has more of a um, sheep face. Do you have a sheep face? A very handsome sheep face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the cave, I'm happy with the way that everything turned out for him. And she didn't use, um, the, the nostrils are not embroidered, they're little buttons. Oh yeah, they're, let me show you again. Look down his nose. <laughs> he has little 12, um, millimeter? 12 millimeter eyes? Yeah, I think so. Size 12 eyes. Um, and these are 30 for the big ones. I'm poking your eyebags. So. Oops, sorry, Mom. Mm. Okay. So he's all done, and he's very happy with it. Yes. And he's going to keep his nose on her. Woofing like horses if I do. You know, like, okay. probably chewing her sleeve. I'm trying to push her along a little bit, because we're going to get long, and I don't want to have another hour and 20 minute podcast for them to sludge through. Okay, we'll go on. Um, 
I'm going to skip on the hooks and needles because I already pretty well went through that with um, with the little um, stuff on the blankets and stuff like that. And I have whips I want to finish, and you'll see them as we go along. Okay, what do I do? But I did want to go into stash enhancements. My first stash enhancement, um, this is from Chaotic Yarn. I love Beth from Chaotic Yarn. Ah, there it is. She's really sweet, and I, I stock her her Etsy shop all the time because she's very reasonably priced and she has pretty yarns. She doesn't have a lot in stock but I like the stuff that she does have in stock. And this one I've had in and out of my cart for six months I think. I kept pu putting it in and putting it out and finally I just said you know what it's there? It smells like lavender. And I said I better pick it up because one day I'm going to turn around and it's not going to be there and I'm not going to get it this cheap anywhere else. She's really fantastically priced. This is called Unaligned Succubus uh, Lost Girl Fandom. I guess that's from some show. I don't know. Um, the colorway is uh, Unaligned Succubus. It's 100% uh, superwash merino uh, wool, three ply, fingering weight, 490 yards. Okay, 490 yards. And it's pretty true to color there. It's a little dark, but it's. It's blues and blacks, and it's just gorgeous, and I think I know exactly what I want to do with it. I have a couple of shawls in mind for it, um, knitted shawls. So this, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about this. And what came in it, what made it smell like lavender, was this really pretty lavender sachet, and it still smells really good. I have to put it somewhere where it's not, you know, wasted. So. And I got a really nice note in here as well. So you might want to check out her Etsy shop. She has some really nice yarns there. And she's very nice. Okay. That's one of them. I already showed you the TARDIS bag. And I showed you the TARDIS uh, gauge. I think you even saw the sheet there. Yeah, you showed them that one. The one you didn't show them with the owl. Well, I have two others. I have the owl. Because I'm trying to put one of these in each of my bags. Or most of my bags, so that way when I um, when I have my projects out and about, I can be sure that um, I'll have. Oh wait, no, it's not many of those are. Those were from Tangerine Eight Designs. This one, I can't remember who I got it from, but I thought it was super cute. So I'm gonna have to try the ribbon. Show them the ribbon first. There's the ribbon. Oh, it's really cute. Actually, I might just sort of be able to. She does it so tight. Because she doesn't want it to fall off. Yeah. There we go. It's cute. I love that child. He is so precious. Oh, it's actually stuck to there. Come on, Hedgehog. I'll have to show it that way. I think it's well, it needs right. to come off anyway. There we go. Oh, it's got that sticky glue and sticky tape in the cap. Isn't he precious? He is so cute. He needs a name. A name that begins with Not H. Sonic. No, it begins with H. I don't know. We'll think of something. He's so precious. He is. So, now it's time for your next session. Okay, I've got, um, it's a set of three. The first one, Ty and I found when we went shopping at Martin's. I love Taste of Home magazine. I know it has nothing to do with knitting, but there you go. Uh, a lot of you have talked about, you know, different ways of, you know, eating better and all this. Taste of home, I wouldn't say is necessarily completely a healthy thing. This is, a lot of it is down home cooking, which I like. And I'm kind of a firm believer in moderation. Um, eat pretty much what you want, but don't eat a whole lot of it. And, um, I have to work harder at not eating a whole lot of it, but <laughs> um, this has some really good recipes in it. I'm really excited about it. My husband saw it. And he was, I love soup, and there are soups in here, and some of these pictures are absolutely amazing. amazing. I mean, they're making me hungry, even though I don't want to eat anything at this particular point in time. I like, oh, this one it's really pretty. I saw it kind of in my mouth water a little bit. Um, I don't know. I can't find it. Oh, that's kind of weird. I can't find it right now, but it's they have some really good, you know, recipes and the way things, you know, the, I don't know, this is pretty good. Um, that was one of them. And then 
I went, we, I went with my husband um, Saturday, uh, right after we ate and before we went to Mass, to, Mo to Walmart to pick up some stuff. We had gotten a new set of dishes and we didn't want to get rid of our old dishes, so we got some plastic containers to put them in. And we had a little time, so I looked went to the magazines. I'm not seamstress, but this has a really good section on measuring that I thought Ty and I could both use. It's um, right in. Well, there's, there's several things. This is called fitting for everyone. Here she's, she's giving me some ideas of where to, you know, how to measure certain areas of the body. And I thought, you know, we might not be sewing, but we still know how to get. We need to know how to get the measurements. So. It's a whole big section. It's called The Best of Threads Fitting. Um, it's, it's a sewing magazine, but specifically geared towards fitting things. The last uh, magazine I got in the Stash Enhancements is Love of Knitting magazine. And my husband is really funny. He, um, he knows I like to knit and crochet and stuff like that. If he sees I'm kind of lagging on anything I'm doing, my writing, my knitting, my crocheting, he kind of likes to nudge me, which is good. I can use that. So he says, you know, you've been doing a lot of crocheting, and, you know, why don't you take a look at this magazine? So I took a look at it. I've seen this magazine before. I actually have a different one, a different issue. So I looked at this one. I saw in here something I really like, and it's really simple, even for me. I know I can't, and I can't tell you why it's simple. Well, let me show you this way. There you go. Um, it's really deceptively simple, and I can't tell you because it is in a magazine that you have to buy, but... You don't have to. I, I can, you don't know how to. You don't have to know how to purl, even. So it's. It looks. There's just some really nice patterns in here. I really like this one here. I'd like to put sleeves on it, maybe. But um, if I ever get to the point where I do sweaters, I keep talking about it, and I don't know that I will. But we'll see. So I was really happy with this, and I really like this one. Not the color, but I like the. That would be really pretty in a royal blue or a red. So that's, these are my stash enhancements. Have you noticed a lot of the things they show in the magazine aren't quite right color? I think they want to appeal to the biggest audience possible, so they tend to, you know, go on to... Like that. Yeah. Do you, um... I have another stash enhancement. Okay. Okay. Um, so my yarn for the, um... Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. What's it called? Um, for the, the bee, for bee leaf, bee leaf shawl has arrived. It's um from Kimberly R. Mm. Hey. Keep going, and then I'll tell about that. Um. Ooh. If I use the code, if I use my code here on my next. Uh, or I'll get 15% off. Oh, well, we, we can maybe use that when we decide to get the prototype. Yeah. Um, this, this dyer is fantastic. We've used her before. So it's a rainbow gradient. Both these are rainbow gradients. This is that they were, they haven't been, um... Did you get two extra? Or, or one and that's the... Um, I already had one, right. but I wanted to get two at the same time. Yeah, really. yeah. 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 So, it was dyed at the same time, so I'm sure it's the same. Um, yeah, I think she dyed it up for you, didn't she? Yes, yeah. She did. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, sock weights, using it for the bee leaf. Yeah. It's a rainbow gradient, three ply ultramarino, uh, 560 yards. And she does a nice size skein and reasonably priced. 560 yards, very nice. Well and I love too. the bright colors. They make me incredibly happy. And you can find her at, at on Etsy. Um, now, <laughs> she, does, she does gradients, which is really exciting. And this leads into something for, um, before we go into the cow stuff, for our upcoming anniversary, we will, we are looking into developing a skein of yarn that is the pen hook and needle colorway. We have already discussed what the colors will be in it, and we have talked to Kimberly about it, and she's willing to, um, to dye it up for us, and we are floating it out there if you would like to be, if you would be interested in um, buying the yarn from her on a pre-order basis uh, when the Potiversary comes around. It will be reds and blues and a gradient so you'll probably have a little purple in it. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We are going to make that available. I am not sure exactly when. I'm still in the preliminary talks with Kimberly. Um, 
but we'd love to hear your feedback. We are going. We are excited about having a, yes. a colorway of our own, and uh, we would love to share that with you. If you are interested, please let us know. We'd like to hear from you. We're going to do it. Um, uh, please tell your friends who watch the podcast, uh, who may have missed this podcast, or anyone who might be interested about it. We'd like to share it with you. Um, and it will be a pre-order basis. Um, and uh, I just want to you know, share that with you so you can be thinking about it and let us know what you think. Um, oh, can I move into the cow? Yes, you can. Oh, okay. that's all we really have. All right, ask. into the cow. Ooh, here are our spokespeople. Oh, there was my tea. At least um, the tea was empty. almost empty. Yeah, this is my. Where is my cloth that I had? You had a cloth. I did have a cloth, just for that purpose. Here. Okay, now, um, now, <sighs> did pretty well until then. <laughs> okay, sorry about that interruption. The cow is almost over, and here are our Tom, it's right in the screen. Oh, sorry about that. You didn't want to see me. You just want to see my cup. Here is Toby, who is joining us. You can bring Beth in for a little while. Um, even, though not, even though he's not, strictly speaking. Here's Rainbow. They're here to say that we are now doing the cow, the Autism Awareness Cow. We only have about a day and a half left, mm. depending on when Talia gets the thread closed. Mm. <laughs> April 30th. Mm. Um... There. Um, there we go. They're all together now. It, all it's closing. Together. All together now. Anyway, April 30th is the last day because there's three days after October. Yes, April 30th. Okay. April 30th is the close date on midnight. It may be, you know, if you can get in. Not midnight on the 30th, midnight on the 1st. No, not midnight. If you happen to be on May 1st in the wee hours because we haven't closed the thread yet. Because um, it closes at midnight. It closes first. on midnight of the last, yeah. In the day between, you know, the midnight between the 30th and the 1st. Because okay. the midnight of the 30th, I mean, it finishes. Right. Um, um, April Tuesday, 30th. April 30th is, April 30th is, is what we're talking about. The April last hour. April 30th is the last day. Day. Um, if the thread is not closed by midnight. May 1st. May 1st. Um, Try to get in your you can, you, can get, <laughs> you can still get in your projects until the thread is closed. Um, it's our fault. It's not closed. You can still benefit from that. Um, okay, I want to thank everybody who has um, participated in the Cal and who is continuing to participate. Please continue to do so till the end. I really appreciate you supporting and promoting autism awareness. Um, it means a lot to us, as we said before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're having a lot of fun looking at your projects. Yes, we um, are. Did you I, talk about Denise? I did. Uh, I do. Um, I. I uh huh. Probably. Yeah, she did. I did. I do want to thank Denise again, though. She did. Um, Denise had come to us, as I said last podcast, regarding her yarn being able to be used in our cal, and we we kind of hemmed and hawed and agonized about it because the yarn is so pretty. It is bright. It's a little paler than I thought. And then I looked at it later on. I said to Talia, I think we should let it in. So we're letting it in our side of the cow. I'm not sure if um, Three Stitches will or not. They may or they may not. But we will definitely let it in to our um, to our cow because it's sunshine colors and that's bright. So we have let them in and so we have welcomed in a couple of members because of that as well. So that's really cool. Um, thank you, Denise, for podcasting about that for us. We appreciate it. Um, I do want to thank um, also... Uh, the lovely ladies of the Three Stitches podcasting group who have been our partners in crime, crime yeah. for this whole thing. They're great. Uh, I love them all the pieces. Watch the podcast. So. Please do watch the podcast. They're funny. They make me laugh all the time, and I love them. If you're not familiar with them, they have a round robin that they kind of mm -hmm. do. Um, you get three podcasts a week out of them. Um, mm -hmm. Mother and two daughters. Mother and two daughters. Michelle, the mother, uh, podcasts on Monday? Monday? I think she's... No, she's Wednesday now. They, yeah, she yeah. used to be Monday. Yeah, she. It's it's Catherine on Monday, Michelle on Wednesday, Wednesday, and Lindsay on Friday. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's yeah. what it is. If I'm not, the because they 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 changed from last semester. Right. It, it a lot depends on the girls' schedule. So, um, anyway, they um 
And Lindsay will be coming home this week, so that might change again. Right. Then they'll be combining Michelle and <laughs> Lindsay probably. And mm-hmm. then when uh, uh, when, when Catherine, Catherine comes home, they'll become one project. And then they have the upheaval of the move, so things yeah. might be a little a little hectic over there. But hopefully they'll be able to podcast at least once a week. Because I'll miss them if they don't. Um, anyway, there's a day and a half or so to go. Um, and uh, I'm... I was telling Ty today that I'm really glad that I don't have to choose a winner, like go through and I say, oh, I like this one better. There are so many fantastic projects there. I am absolutely amazed and inspired, and mm. some of the projects are just, all of the projects are just amazing. I, I just, I'm glad that we're using a random number generator because <laughs> I would, I just, no, I just couldn't do it. And like I said, please keep, we have like 35 entries, I think. Oh, I have we're, we're on number 40 last time I looked. Um, I think our last entrant was um, Danger Mouse with one of hers when she joined. And um, and she was number 40, but we had a couple of, you know, my, my first post and that kind yeah. of stuff. So I think we had like 35 or 37 or something. The way to look at the how the pictures are. Right. Uh, so we have quite a few, but we can always have more. We have nine prizes to give away. Um, so... That, that's other thank yous to Anastasia Knits for her three patterns that she's donating for three lucky winners. Patchwork Moose for Moose? her yeah. for three patterns that she has donated. Um, knitting for my bag who donated this bag to one winner. And Plover Bird who has donated these two bags. This is a sock bag and this is a medium bag. So we have some really, really nice prizes. Um, I thank them all, and I thank everybody who supported us so much with this. I would like to leave you with a little tidbit, because next week it's going to be taken up with the results from the um, cow. From the cow. Um, and, and that's the last week before I go on vacation. Right, and I probably won't do the random number generator on the screen. I will probably have it already listed. I'll have it written down so you can see that it has been done, but I probably won't do it on the screen. Yeah, it takes um, too it long. It takes too long with as many people as we have, with as many um, prizes as we have. But I did want to leave you with something I found on the autism site. Um, this is about family issues and autism. Um, First of all, parents and caregivers, now that they have an autistic child or an autistic spectrum disorder child or, or person in their family, their priorities have to change. Uh, they, they ha- the stresses can be put on their marriage, on their family life, on their jobs, all kinds of things that you wouldn't think of. Um, my husband had said something about the divorce rate rising in families with Asperger's or autism kids, and I think that's probably true of any special yeah. needs because it puts such a stressor um, on it. So you have to be aware of, um, the people have to be aware of uh, of the stress and, and have find ways of dealing with it. I mean, you've got financial stress, you've got emotional stress, you've got, you know, just all kinds of things that you wouldn't have thought that, that would be a part of your family life when there's enough stress as there is. Something else um, that happens is the stress in general, in particular with the relationship to the in the family, spouses to spouses, and siblings. Uh, Talia can speak better to the sibling aspect than I can, um, that it brings to have you know, a special needs child that requires so much attention, mm-hmm. that you know the parent has to, or the parents have to give this other child so much attention and yet not slight the other uh, family members. Or the spouse, mm-hmm. um, it's very important, and so, they have, it's very important for them to talk about that what can be expected, what can be, um, that's okay to have this kind of stress and how you can work through it. And I never, you guys actually did a really good job of not making me feel like Davina got any more attention than, than I did. Um, what was more difficult was when we hit about teenage, preteen years and she started realizing I was passing her up because I'm the younger sister. Uh, Davina's older than me by about two years, um, and once she realized that I was passing her up developmentally, because she's smart, she's not, she's a, she's developmentally delayed, but kids are, can be really sharp, and... She's not intellectually delayed. No, and it was very difficult, um, very difficult. Mm-hmm. 
high school was not my favorite time period for many reasons. Um, it was very hard on her, very hard on me. It was hard on everybody. Um, yeah. It, and, you know, it's, it's just something that, you know, support of family and friends is very important. Also a knowledge of what's what's happening, you know, what can be expected, what kind of behaviors can be expected, how you can deal with those behaviors. And that is okay to get upset. And mm -hmm. it's okay. You don't have to be this paragon of virtue because you know what? You're, you're going to chew yourself up. You have to be human. And they have to know that everything they do is not going to be met with, you know, they need to know that they do things wrong. And so um, it, it's a I used to tell my priest it's really hard to know the line to walk so that you can discipline without nagging or without expecting too much and what's too little. Just like any other kid but more magnified because it never seems to go away, especially with one that's developmentally delayed. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that they cite as being important is finding time for prayer, uh, regardless of your faith or your belief. Finding time for prayer and attending a place of worship that helps a lot of families. I know it's been a very big part of our life. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a very big part of her life. She talks to God constantly, and I'm grateful for that. Um, that means that you know she's got her priorities and her, and her mindset straight, even if I don't think she's behaving properly. Um, she knows where to turn, and that's good. She she gets mad at God. Yeah. She gets very mad at God, but I figure God's big enough; He can take the hit. He he. He knows, and he takes care of her, and he takes care of us, even when we have our meltdown. So I think that's a very important um, aspect as well. So those are the tidbits I wanted to leave with you. I had a lot of other things I wanted to, sh to share with you, but I just didn't have the time. Um, you can learn more about the Autistic Spectrum Disorders at um, www.autism-society.org uh, backslash about slash um, dash autism backslash, but we'll post it. I just want to tell you. There's a lot more information there. Okay, so um, it's starting to get dark in here. I think it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. um, it has been good to podcast with you. I'm incredibly tired all of a sudden, but I think it's probably partially weather, partially getting back on schedule. And I think we thanked everybody, right? I, I, I think thanked. we did. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you very much for stopping by to listen to us. We love visiting with you. Mm hmm. I might, may or may not be able to show this on the next podcast if I send this to Josh and Mel before. I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture yeah. and insert it because I have a feeling that this will be on its way before the next podcast because I don't want to wait and have Mel have a baby before the rise um, because she could realistically have a baby at any time now. Yeah, I don't think she will. The first baby she usually don't come early. Yeah. But, um, yep, that's it. So we are done. You're probably saying, yay, it's finally. Oh, we're not too late. But that's a little later than I wanted to, but oh well. Um, it's good to talk to you. We will be here next week, God willing, with the prize drawings. And please keep those projects coming. And invite your friends and talk to us on the threads. We'd love to hear from you. All righty. God bless. God bless. Bye. Happy New Year. Goodbye. Uh, Another stop. Bye.